Hi there and welcome. Today we want to do a data table versus dplyr benchmark session. Um, I know this is an old topic in the R community. It has been discussed a lot and there are blog posts and videos um, dealing with that topic. Um, what motivates me today and why I think it's still relevant to talk about it is because there's a powerful package called dtplyr that as far as I am aware of is not as popular in the R community yet as our data table and dplyr. And this gives you a chance to make um, use of the best of two worlds. Well, what are the two worlds? Of course, data table has the reputation of being blazingly fast and this reputation is well justi justified, has been proven many times, whereas dplyr in particular and the whole tidyverse collection of packages in general um, have been a game changer for a lot of people to get them into the R community in the, force in the first place, like showing that data analysis can be fun and um, code can be quite easy to write and to memorize and to apply. I'm not saying that data table is, is very hard to learn, especially when you come from SQL, for example. Um, you can get into it too, so I'm not... Um, I don't aim it like saying one package is generally better than the other, but rather empower people to use whichever approach they prefer. So we can be really thankful um, to have this great variety of packages. All right, um, what are we going to do? Um, the code I wrote is not entirely um, made up by me. This is the original blog post, DTPlyr Speed Benchmarks. It was written in late May 2020 and this inspired me to do this code. Um, Mr. Lin is the guy who wrote this code, so thank you to him. And this is his GitHub profile, um, but I just didn't um, copy his code, but rewrote it a little bit. So, um, yeah, I'm inspired by it, but I changed it. So one thing is that he used system time to benchmark and I used the micro benchmark package and um, in my simulations I found that system time is not very accurate um, it may be okay for for like reasonable run times for very short run times it's quite inaccurate so a dedicated package like micro benchmark or the newer bench package from the studio team are more accurate and another finding is that um, I wouldn't rely on a single measurement in the original blog post there were two system time calls for each task. I think two might still be not enough because you can have uh, quite some outliers. So we will do 10 runs for each task and the micro benchmark package makes that easy because the number of runs is a parameter and you don't have to um, manually rewrite the calls. All right. Um, and also I rewrote the code in other ways like I use dedicated functions, so the benchmarking only calls functions, whereas in the original post, the whole code, the whole task was wrapped in a system time call. The packages we're going to use are, of course, data table and dplyr, and then dtplyr. Um, dtplyr has been completely rewritten in 2019, so it's worth looking at it after this rewrite because it's a lot more efficient now. It uses lazy evaluation which means that you can chain several commands and only when you're finished writing your commands they are translated to data table code to make use of data table speed but writing dplyr code um, and before commands were evaluated eagerly that means each command was translated separately which led to more inefficient code so now it's become much more efficient. This is the data simulation and um, so it's randomly generated data and we create two, two data frames of 10 million rows each. DF is a tibble, so tidyverse style data frame we could say, and DT is a data table object so that each package or each approach can use its native um, data format. We quickly look at some descriptive statistics. I do this using dplyr code. So we have an ID variable ID1 that has 100 unique values. You see it here in the console down at the left, um, bottom left. Another ID variable ID5 has got 100,000 distinct values. And then we have three numeric variables V1, V2 and V3. V3. 
v1 and v2 have five unique values each and v3 has got 100 unique values okay so what are the tasks that we want to benchmark in the original blog post there were five and i for the sake of simplicity of this video um, focus only on two and i think we can get quite some um, telling conclusions from this the first task is to sum variable v1 for each id1 group so we get a result of 100 rows back and the second task is to sum variables v1, v2 and v3 for each id5 column so here we get 100,000 rows back so the results differ in in size 100 rows and 100,000 rows and they should be sufficiently large to give the packages and the approaches a chance to show their speed and their strength um, we have four approaches the first one is a pure data table approach you find the code here um, I put the code on my github and link to it in the description the second one is a dplyr part so we write dplyr code and have it translated to data table to make use of data table speed and we'll see how that works um, we start out with a tibble or tidyverse style data frame we could say and it's evaluated lazily so we have to explicitly um, request the results to have the code run we do that for both tasks and then we have a second approach also for the dtplyr package and this approach is called dt underscore dtplyr and the difference is that we now start with a data table object rather than a tibble and we will see that this can make quite a difference um, apart from that it's the same in the end we request the results using as data table rather than as tibble as we did here above okay and then we have a pure dplyr code it's basically the same code as above only um, we use dplyr to evaluate and run it rather than um, data table in the background okay now because um, the benchmarking will take a while I run the code and we can check above here if the results are the same I know that packages like bench for example can compare results automatically but the challenge here is that we have different data objects so I um, compare the results manually just using the str function and a glimpse of the few first few values and we see that with all four approaches the two tasks q1 and q5 um, yield the same results okay benchmarking still runs and now we get the results and we have three ways of looking at them in the console here at the bottom left you see numeric results and we see distributions um, and we have this compact letter display on in the rightmost column that shows us which results differ significantly um, but maybe it's easier to look at the um, graphics so this is a plot of the first task and we see that data table at the bottom and dt dt plier are the fastest um, data table is no surprise that it's so fast but the two dt plier approaches differ quite distinctly here the first one used a table as a starting point and the second one here higher up dt dt plier used a data table as a starting point and we see that this makes quite a difference whereas the pure dplyr approach is much slower looking at the results here in the console um, we see how big the difference actually is um, data table is the fastest comparing only the medians for now um, because we have some outliers and maybe a, um, not a normal distribution here so the median is probably the most robust result so data table is the fastest followed by the second dt plier approach which is on the same level really 142 milliseconds versus 151 it's not much of a difference but the third approach here in the second line um, dt plier as well but starting with a tibble is twice as slow as dt plier starting with a data table so this is really a takeaway you can use the dt plier package writing dplyr code and making use of data table speed 
but if you do so, use it in the right way. And the right way is to start with a data table object and not a table. So I think this is quite a big takeaway, an important lesson. Um, and the player is far off here in speed. It's even more drastic in the second example that um, has 100,000 rows in the result rather than only 100. The player is even further off there. Um, Going back to this plot, that doesn't seem to be displayed. Um, okay, so we see that dplyr is, is far off, so there's no discussion that dplyr is slower for this amount of data and this, these kinds of tasks. Whereas, again, data table and the fast dtplyr approach are almost at the same level, like here 257 versus 259 milliseconds, so that's hardly relevant. Um, you'd have, you'd need to have very big data to really um, feel this difference. Um, using DT plier in an inefficient way, however, is, is again quite distinctly slower, and the inefficient way, of course, is to use it um, starting with a table. So the big takeaway is if you are more used to tidyverse syntax and dplyr, um, you can stick with it if you like, and you can use the dtplyr package if you need data table speed advantage. Of course, you're always free to write data table syntax directly if you prefer. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, so I think this was um, yeah, a nice takeaway. Um, I wasn't aware of this in that detail before I ran these tests, and just to finish off, I want to show you that there are more packages that can translate dplyr code to other backends. What we saw now is the third line, the dtplyr package. Um, there's also also the dbplyr package that you normally don't need to worry about because it's so tightly integrated with dplyr. And that is useful when you want to communicate with data in a database rather than RS memory. You can write just the same dplyr code as you would if data were, were in memory. And all you need to do is um, define our database connection, and then you talk to this connection as if it were a data frame or a table in OS memory. Then there's the DB plot package that I only became aware of recently. Um, so that's when you have a lot of data in a database, and you want to um, to plot this data, and it would take a lot of time to. Um, shift all the data from the database to R using ggplot2. Um, so using the db pl plot package, you can do the calculations that you need for your plot, for example, for histogram to calculate the bins. Um, you can do that inside the database and then it's a lot faster and there's a lot less data that you need to transfer to R to use ggplot2 to plot it. So this can be a game changer and be more efficient to plot from databases. And the third one I want to briefly mention is the Sparkly R package um, that connects R to Apache Spark clusters and you can write deep, deep player style syntax to talk to the data and even make use of Spark's built-in machine learning algorithms. So that may, may be a lot faster than um, putting all the data in R's memory. Okay, yeah, that's basically it. If you're not so aware of tidyverse packages, um, Here's a small overview for the core, core tidyverse, um, dplyr, ggplot2, tidyr, readr, per, tibble, string r, and four cats. And the tidyverse offers still more, but the, the packages here um, with more specialized usage are not automatically loaded as you call library tidyverse. So there are some um, dedicated packages that you need to um, load with separate calls to library. So it's DBI, Haven, HDR, ReadXL, Lubridate, HMS, Blob, um, Magritta, but that's um, the pipe operator at least is included in um, dplyr, but there are more piping operators there, the like glue package, and finally a whole collection of packages called tidy models for machine learning. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, um, give it a thumbs up and also um, subscribe to the channel, it really helps. All the best for your data analysis projects and hope to see you soon. Goodbye.